This is part two of the assembly video showing how to put the gears into my easy build clock. The gears will go into the clock in the same order that they're shown in the assembly manual. So you can follow along in the printed manual or watch the video. Now, probably the first step here is to insert the arbors into the holes and into the gears to make sure everything fits. If, if they're too tight, there's going to be too much friction. Um, and what you're going to want to do is drill out the holes. I like to take the three millimeter holes and just quickly run a 1 8 inch drill bit through them. That seems to oversize the hole just enough that the hole is loose but not too sloppy. And do the same thing on the smaller arbors. Make sure that the arbor will go through all of the gears and it will spin easily. And you know, since this is a one and a half millimeter drill bit, something like a 1.7 or 1.8 millimeter drill bit would probably be the right size or go back and forth with a 1 16th or a one and a half millimeter until, until you get a, a nice loose fit and do that for all the gears. Assembly of the gears starts from the bottom and works upward. Uh, that way the gears aren't in your way when you place the final gears and the first gear that goes in is the minute hand arbor goes right into the center of the clock. I mean, obviously the minute hand comes through the center of the dial. So minute hand arbor goes there and make sure it spins easily. The gear seven ratchet has a small arbor, the three inch long. The ratchet goes over that. This ratchet has already been assembled. And when those are together, that should spin easily. The ratchet arbor has a thin bearing, or thin spacer that goes over the top. Uh, the reason for that is this tall gear in the ratchet was printed where this is the bottom surface. Don't want this large surface to rub against the front frame. So a small spacer is used. The next step is the gear nine arbor, gear nine spacer, followed by gear nine. Gear nine is the one with the slotted end for the winding key. And again, when you, when you rotate that, all the gears should spin with it. Now the, the winding drum, and I'm putting in raw bearings that have not been cleaned out. They're perfectly fine on the, the weight shell and the, the winding drum, but I definitely would not use raw bearings for the, the pallet. So put in a three millimeter arbor and the winding drum. Uh, there is a short spacer eight with the three millimeter hole that goes onto the winding drum arbor and another bearing. That completes the left side of the gears. On the right side, there's a few more gears and kind of have to do them in the order that's shown in the manual, otherwise it gets difficult. Start with an arbor in the upper hole. Gear three with the pinion down so that it engages with gear four. When you rotate gear three, you should notice gear four rotating as well. 
uh, another arbor. Y your design will have a taller hub in this hole that just keeps all of the three millimeter arbors the same length and makes it a little bit easier. So no, there's no need to distinguish any of the, the, the one and a half millimeter arbors. And then insert gear two. Gear two is the one with the tall shaft and that tall shaft is what allows it to have the pinion interact with the gear three which has now been slightly raised up that should rotate although the arbors are getting a little bit wobbly when it rotates you see gear three rotating as well then there is a spacer with the small diameter hole gear five with the pinion up and gear five needs to mesh with gear 4b this was the gear that was press fit onto the minute hand arbor then we put on the escapement the escapement is obviously different from all of the rest uh, because it doesn't have normal gear teeth it has escapement teeth the escapement pinion is going to mesh with the lower of the two gears that are on the, the right side um, the gears do rotate but things are getting a little bit wobbly that'll clear itself up after we put the top frame on on top of the escapement is another spacer with the small diameter hole and then we can put the the pallet in place you could also put the pallet in place later um, because this piece comes off from the back of the clock just taking out two screws um, that makes it nice when you're debugging because you can remove the pallet and test the entire gear train without the pallet touching the escapement yeah that's as part of the friction tests so i i dropped a clean dry bearing into the bearing hole the pallet arbor this is the intermediate length arbor i believe it's three and a half inches long whereas all of the other ar arbors are three inches long or four and a half inches long and then the completed pallet assembly with the pallet arms at the top so that they can engage with the escapement and things are definitely wobbling around that's okay uh, then there's a spacer that goes on top of the pallet arbor and then a second clean and dry bearing final gear can now be placed which is the hour hand gear that hour hand gear will mesh with gear 5 right here once we add the the front frame the front frame is added so that the hole in the center goes over the the hour hand gear and it's not going to drop all the way into place because some of these arbors are tilted to the side stopping this thing from going together and what you do is you just start on either end and wiggle things around until they start dropping into place and I can feel that this is the only one that hasn't dropped into position and there it goes everything just dropped down and now I can add the the two screws holding the frame together
don't over tighten these screws uh, you very likely will be taking this thing apart many many times you don't want to strip these screws they really aren't holding anything together other than keeping the position uh, so they don't need to be super tight so you don't want to strip those screws out when this thing is all together the dial part of the front frame will completely come together with the support column and all of the the gears have the arbors have gone into the the top frame and you, you should be able to push any of these gears side to side and you can see there's a little bit of play you don't want the frame to have closed up on the gears uh, th that's what they call end shake you want a little bit of end shake to prevent having friction on the components and any of the gears I can push them in or out and there's just a small amount of play I can now add the hands. The hour hand is just a press fit. It goes on in any direction. Um, you can spin it to get it lined up where you want it. Yeah. The minute hand is keyed, can only go on in one direction. Line everything up to 12 o'clock. And then when you rotate the minute hand, the hour hand should move with that. So at this point, you should have all the gears in the clock. Everything should be looking like a clock and you're ready to hang the clock on the wall and get the clock working. Check the next video for some debug hints.